I, I, I've said this before we've heard me preach. I, you know, I have young kids, five years old, three years old, my daughter, they're sleeping right now. But I, I was going to say something to them like that. What does it mean to follow Jesus? I'd say, set the sails of your life. Yes. Cut the anchors. And let the wind of the Holy Spirit take you anywhere he wants to take you. When you cut the anchors, you stop when the wind slows down. You accelerate when the wind accelerates. You don't have to know where you're going. You don't have to know what to do. If your parents are asking you, I know some of you like, hey, what are you going to do with your life? You don't need to know it. You're going to do with your life. This is your answer. I'm going to follow Jesus because he's the leader and he has the plan. You just get lost in the Lord. He'll take you. So you see the story in Acts 8. And the persecuted church is going that there's this, this story called Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. I'm going to share it real quick. And it says this. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury in Candide. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Do you understand in this? The angel of the Lord comes to Philip, and he said, go to the south road. When he said go to the south road, he didn't say you're going to meet this Ethiopian eunuch. He didn't say you were going to run into someone who needs Jesus. He just said, go to this road. And as he was going, there was something God was doing sovereignly, divinely. And there was this encounter that happened. This is common in the scriptures. You guys understand this? When Jesus invites his disciples, he says, come and follow me. He doesn't say, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen. He just says, leave everything and follow me. Many times in the gospel, Jesus is going somewhere. Even when he's going to Jerusalem to be crucified, there's two blind men on the way. And sometimes there's this place of on the way that God wants to interrupt and do something miraculous. And so he goes, and you see this even with Abraham. So you guys know Abraham, the patriarch and father of our faith, patriarch of our faith. The Lord says to him, he's with his family, and he says, go to a land that I will show you. I don't know about you, but I might be like to the Lord, can we get a little bit more details in what that means? He says, go to the land that I will show you. It's very vague. And again, here you say, the angel of the Lord said, go to this road. Philip doesn't know what's going to happen when he goes. You are not responsible for the result, but you are responsible to risk and be obedient to the Lord. You don't have to know everything he's doing. You just have to respond when he is calling you to go. And so as he's going, something happens that he didn't imagine. I remember about five years ago, my son was, my, my wife was about eight months pregnant with my son. And I'm going to work. I'm working at a church in Troy called Kensington. And I'm driving there and I'm getting lost in worship, guys. I'm praying and I'm getting lost. And as I'm worshiping the Lord, I, I feel the Spirit of God speak to me. Not audibly, but in my mind, I just feel the Lord speak to me. And, and he says, you need to go home. And I'm like, is this the enemy? Like, I was getting lost and I was like suddenly distracted. And I was like, what's going on? And I'm like, maybe my wife's like a believer. She's not much pregnant. I need to get home. And so I have this choice. I'm going to be late for my meeting at 9 a.m. Or I'm going to be obedient and start going home. And so I get to this, this thing. And I'm going to go about my day as normal. Or I'm going to turn left. And I remember being there and being like, I feel like I'm, I don't know if this is the Lord. I, I didn't really know. I just felt like this would be like, go to South Street. Right? And he's like, go home. And I'm like, I don't know what the Lord has planned, but I can go home. And so I turn left instead of going on my normal routine. And I start texting the person I'm going to meet with. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to be late. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Try to follow Jesus. And uh, I start, I'm, I'm on 75, I think there was like the Rochester exit, so you guys know where that is. And I turn left and I start doing the turnaround to go back home. And I feel the Lord speak to me and he says, you guys really think this is wild. He says, you don't have to go home, I just wanted to see if you would do what I said. And then he said, so often in your life, you want to know why I'm asking you to do something. When I ask you to fast, you might not need to know why, just do it. When I ask you to talk to this person, just do it. You keep wanting to understand why I'm asking you, but you just need to be obedient and trust that I know what I'm doing. Philip doesn't know why the Lord is asking him to go to South Street. The Lord knows he wants to encounter him with someone. And so I turn around and the Lord speaks to me and he was just like, do whatever I tell you to do today. And so I started this day and I go and the first thing that happens, I, I, I end up getting to my meeting, I'm a little late and I'm going to the bathroom and at a church at the where not everyone believes in the prophetic, and I feel the Lord say, Give this person a prophetic word. And I'm like, Lord, this isn't a person that wants a prophetic word. <laughs> and he's like, Just do what I ask you to do. You don't have to worry about the outcome. I'm asking for your obedience, not to control the outcome. And 
so I give this person this word. Hopefully, it means something to them. I go to this thing, and then I get done with my meeting, and I feel the Lord say, "Go to Starbucks and write and write this sermon." And He said, "Go to Starbucks, write your sermon. I'm going to send people to you while you're working on your sermon." I get to Starbucks. Of course, the guy at the register is a guy I gave a word to about two months ago about starting a blog about mental health, and I gave it to him. And I'm like, "Hey, man, you did this blog." And he was like, "No," and 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 I walked away scared. And then the Lord was like, "That's something he needs to do, not something he's currently doing." So two months go by. I'm like, "I gotta go get this guy this word." I go, and of course, this guy's working there. I go to the Lord. I give him the word. He looks at me. I don't know if he received it or not, but he took it. I go and sit down. As I go and sit down, this woman sits next to me, and I feel this urge from the Lord. He says, "Her son has walked away from me. Tell her I hear her prayers, and her son's going to come back home." And so I turn to her and I go, "Hey, do you have a son that walked away from?" She's like, yes, I do. And I'm like, hey, I feel like I have a word for you. And so I pray over her. This woman then starts praying for me. And at the time, my son, his name is Bryce John. We named him John after John the Baptist, as we believe he's going to prepare the way for the second coming. Woo! <laughs> John the Baptist generation. And uh, this woman, and so you guys know it says in John the Baptist, this woman we pray, God, we pray like John the Baptist, my son will be filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb. That's what it says about John the Baptist. This woman starts praying to me. I don't think she's trying to hear from the Lord. She just starts praying this prayer. And she goes, Lord, we thank you for his son that's going to be born. We thank you that he's a John the Baptist. And he's been filled with the Holy Spirit since the time of conception. And I'm like, what is going on? Right? I'm just sitting there. I didn't know what the Lord had planned when he said go to Starbucks. But he had two encounters ready. I get done with my message. I go back to the church. In the lobby, I see this girl writing in the in, in, in the lobby. And as I look at her, I see her hands Painting. And so I go up to her and I go, hey, do you paint? And she's like, I love painting, but I have a disease in my hands and I don't know if I should paint anymore because it hurts. And so I say, hey, I just had this word of you painting. I pray for her and, and, and she experiences like healing. She's crying. Later she gets connected with someone who goes through this inner healing thing. She's getting out of a relationship with a guy who is an atheist and she has this encounter with the Lord. I have a phone call later that night. Get this guy this word, and it was like, I got to the end of the day, the next day, I think you guys should do this. I go and process with the Lord, and this is what he says to me. I'll never forget this line. He said, Cody, I'm not a man-made canal. I'm a wild river. And he said, you need to give up your understanding. If you follow Jesus as far as you understand what he's doing, you're not following Jesus. You're following your understanding. He says, submit to me in all your ways, acknowledge me, and what he will make your path straight. And so he invites you to follow him past his understanding. If you only follow him as long as you understand him, you're not going to follow him very long. You don't know the things he's asking you to do. Some of these guys are with us, NBL, every heart. I know a lot of their movement. Believe me, they did not believe what they are doing now. They could be doing five years ago. They just got together in a college room and started worshiping Jesus with all their hearts. Yeah. Right? And he had plans that they didn't know about. But they're yes to him. They're surrendered to him. They're abandoned to him. He started taking them because he is the leader. And we are the sheep who follow. And so the Lord says, I'm not a man named Canel. I'm a wild river. Here's the difference. You guys ever been on the lazy rivers? Yeah. You know, it's like this man-made thing. You control the, the speed of the water. You control what's going on. You might, you might have a little drink on there. You get in your little tube, and you just float around. That is what Christianity is like so often, especially in America. God, I want you to be a part of my life. Fit into my life. Fit into my structure. We're going to speed that I want to go. The difference between the man-made canal and the wild river, here's the difference. The wild river is wild, and you get in a raft. You ride the river. You don't control the river. And some of the Lord invites us, don't follow me. You don't make the structure and try to fit them into your life. What we just did, you surrender. You get on the raft, and it's wild, and it's crazy, and you can't control the speed. Of it, but you trust and you enjoy the journey with the people you are going with. He's not a man made canal, he's a wild river. He's not asking you to just fit him into your life. He's asking you to be abandoned, set your sails, and catch the wind of the Holy Spirit to go wherever he would call you. And here's the truth what you are looking for is to say, the joy of surrender. The joy of surrender is say, Jesus, I'll set the sails, I'll cut the anchors, I will go. Isaiah the prophet. Come on. He goes as he's 
going, he meets this Ethiopian eunuch who's looking for God. That's why he was in Jerusalem at the temple. He, he thinks he's going to meet God in the temple, but he's actually going to meet him in the chariot through Philip. And so this is what happened. And of course, this is a setup from the Lord because he's reading the book of Isaiah. And it says this, he's reading the book of Isaiah and he says to Philip, do you understand what you are reading? That's what Philip said. Philip asked, how can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. You know what it's always a good time for? Sharing the good news of Jesus. <laughs> and so this guy, what is Philip here? The angel Lord, go to South Street. The Lord had way more in mind. On his way to this destination, he runs into a man that the Lord had plans for. And this person was already waiting, ready for this word. And here's the thing. So you guys know this man ends up receiving the Lord. How does the good news of Jesus get to Ethiopia because of this encounter. So the Lord had in mind, I'm going to start churches and the good news in Ethiopia. And how does he start that? Not with a huge church planning conference, not with five steps of the planning church. He says, go to South Street. And he follows the wind of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord in his grand orchestration is doing more than you could ask or imagine. I remember I was at BSSM, Bethel Church, we went on a mission trip to Salt Lake City, we went to the Mormon temple to share our faith. And later that day, we all got together some girls there, like 30, 40 from Europe on our team, and they're like, we had the craziest story happen today. And they're like, we're at the Mormon temple, and we just felt the Holy Spirit saying to us, why don't we just dance? And we're all like, this is going to work. You know? But they felt like the Lord let them do it. That's how the Lord wants to reach people. So they said they start dancing, and everyone's walking by them. They said, there's one guy that's watching us. And after a while, they went up to him, and they said, do you like our dance? <laughs> conversation, he has the Book of Mormon, and he said, I'm looking for truth, and they led him to Jesus, Woo! and they find him out, this guy is in America, he's from Iran, he won the green card lottery in Iran, only five people get that a year, and he ended up in the United States through that chance at the Mormon temple on this day, and the Lord invited the people on our team to dance, and he had this in mind, later that night he came to our revival service, I got to pray for this man, he gets touched by the Holy Spirit, he starts weeping uncontrollably, we start prophesying over his life about him going back to Iran and leading his nation to Jesus, he's crying, I can't talk to him, and I remember I just looked at him and I said, I'll probably never meet you again, but I'll see you in heaven someday, brother. That is who the Lord is, that is what the Lord does. And so this is what it says. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. And then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but ran on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. You don't have to understand, you just have to say yes. And you know what's beautiful? I know, I know there's at least one person, but as we go into the new year and we celebrate, we get to do the same thing. We're proclaiming the good news tonight. We're singing to Jesus. And there are people through baptism, just like the Ethiopian eunuch, that's been happening since the foundation of the Christianity faith, that are going down into the water, signifying the death. Some of you, you got on your knees tonight. You've never been baptized in the same way. You should go get the water tonight at midnight. What a better way to start the year if you've never been baptized and say, like this Ethiopian eunuch said. Do you 
want to send me, I'll go. If you want to plant me, I'll be planted. But I will not let fear dictate my life. I will not let finances dictate my life. I will not let the fear of man dictate my life. I will be led by Jesus, and I will move with the Holy Spirit. I will not build and invite God into a man-made canal called my life, but I will ride the wild river of Jesus. Amen. I want to invite you guys to stand with me. And I know there's at least one person that's going to be baptized. Come over with us, and we're going to start a countdown. Hopefully we get it at the right time. You guys won't know. Go look at your phones. But we're going to count down into the new year. And when we hit zero on that countdown, we're going to start baptizing people. And we're going to keep worshiping. We're, we're really planning on going to one hand, so we're not close to being done. But we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to baptize people. And so if you want to be baptized, as we start baptizing people, we got towels. You might not have planned it, but that's okay. You didn't plan it. The Holy Spirit might have planned it for you. You might not know why you came here. You might have came here to get baptized and give your life to Jesus and fully surrender to Him tonight. And so if you guys want to do this with me right now, just open up your hands in a posture of surrender again. And we're going to step into the joy of surrender. If you guys want to just open your hands, hold your conversations for a minute, because we're going to talk to Jesus. And I'm just going to pray this right now. And just pay attention to what the Holy Spirit brings to you. I'm going to say this, God, what do you want me to know about my life? Jesus, what do you want me to know about 2024? Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.